Ah uh, yes, the MMO genre. How interesting it is. How it has brought many memories and nostalgia to so many of us that have played this type of game for so many years. When you look back into MMOs from 15 to 20 years ago, for instance like World of Warcraft, EverQuest, or RuneScape, they were made very differently than how they are being made in recent years. Some of the more recent MMOs though, for instance like ESO, New World, Lost Ark, Black Desert, and also coming in the future, hopefully one day Ashes of Creation, are kind of starting the regime of this this newer generation of MMOs. But which one is actually the best MMO experience? Have you ever asked yourself these type of questions like, do I like having gear score or would I like having a capped gear level? Do I like having slower paced combat with tap targeting or do I want faster based combat? These are just a few of the things I wanna talk about today as we compare two very different styles of MMOs and give you my opinion on if there is a clear winner for the best type of MMO, classic, or newer. I know this type of discussion could bring a lot of opinions and comments and I welcome that, but if you are on your way to make a comment, make sure to check out my memberships and definitely like the video if you do like this content. If you become a member, you get access to all of our perks. You get your name up here in the video and uh, thank you again to my patrons as well. I do hope that you guys do enjoy this and so sit back, relax, and let's talk about the classic and the newer MMOs. So what defines a classic MMO? I think there are a lot of things that you can say about a classic MMO that defines it, but one of the staple features in my opinion is the tab targeting element. This to me is one of the most retro systems or first of its kind systems that kind of shaped how the combat was for these older MMOs. The main one that I have played is World of Warcraft and RuneScape, but you also have other MMOs that have tab targeting. But if you don't know what tab targeting is, it's basically what it's called. You press the tab key to target and cycle through an enemy you want to fight. This is something that older players have come accustomed to in these older MMOs. So when they have tried transitioning to a game like ESO, they've had a little bit more trouble adjusting to the more click intensive combat. A feature that these classic MMOs typically have that is related to tab targeting is GCDs or global cooldowns. If you've ever watched someone play WoW or maybe Final Fantasy, or if you played it yourself, you'll notice that when you press a skill, there's sort of a clock motion on the skill that denotes how much time you have left to use that skill. Sometimes it's slower and sometimes it's really fast. Games with GCDs, again, for the most part, have a more structured combat in my opinion. And what I mean by structure is that you have your rotation and you can only do a limited amount of actions in a span of time but there obviously is skill still involved with mastering DPS rotations in games like WoW. But when I visually think of combat in classic MMOs with GCDs, I think of structure or a rhythm. Another massive feature classic MMOs had, and keyword had, was no group finders. Back in the day MMOs, you had to talk to people and manually group up. Now, a lot of these games obviously have added those, but some people would argue that not having the group finder made the world more social and more fun. Other people argue that the group finder is a must, and I can definitely see both sides of the argument. And I will say having a group finder is a really nice quality of life upgrade. But moving on to another classic MMO staple, and that is gear score. I think that this is something that not everyone necessarily likes, but personally, I love it. I used to really like the non gear score aspect of ESO, but after playing a while and playing WoW, I think gear score just gives you an incentive to always keep grinding. So what is the biggest feature though of classic MMOs that stands out to me? Well, I'm glad you asked. To me, what classic MMO feature stands out the most over new MMOs is the ability to earn cosmetics, mounts, or other vanity items by just grinding, playing, and getting lucky with drops. MMOs that were made before around 2010, I swear, just had the best reward structure. And the biggest reason for that is they didn't rely on the cash shop to make revenue. It sounds cliche, and you probably get tired of me saying it, but newer MMOs have so many microtransactions. And I will speak on that later when we get to newer MMOs and explain why that is the case but think about it besides Final Fantasy think of one major MMO created after 2010 again barring Final Fantasy that doesn't have a cash shop as their primary source of earning cosmetics. Guild Wars 2 has cosmetics and apparently you can earn them air quotes but after talking to a bunch of you on my stream and playing through a good bit, you basically have told me that earning specific cosmetics in that shop takes so much grinding. ESO has the same thing in a, in a way with their Seals of Endeavors, but they have the Crown Store, which I don't really have time to talk about the fiasco. I've made about a thousand videos in the channel, but I'll say ESO does have cool motifs that you can earn, but again, those lose a lot of value because you can buy a lot of them, or you can buy all of them actually with gold, and you can buy some of them in the Crown Store 
store with real money. So it takes away the prestige of it. New World is mainly a cash shop cosmetic game, but I don't mind it, honestly, in that game. And they are supposed to be getting transmogs, so that's nice. Lost Ark is a free game, so a lot of its revenue has to come from a cash shop or microtransactions. And it's crazy, you all, seriously, look at every MMO after 2010, and you just can't find one, again, besides Final Fantasy, like some of these MMOs that we had before. There are major reasons why that's the case. But again, I'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But this leads me to thoughts on classic MMOs as a whole. With saying all these features and staples in classic MMOs, you also have to understand that classic MMOs have a major advantage as they were the first MMOs to kind of start or create the standard of the MMORPG genre. So when MMOs were massive in the early 2000s, everyone and their mom remembers the good old days. This is why it's so hard to replicate a lot of the successes of these games and some of these newer launches that you see and why newer MMOs end up being such disappointments on launch day to longtime fans of the genre. They have their hopes up that this is going to be just like WoW or EverQuest or RuneScape. And these standards are almost impossible to meet in today's climate of video games. And I'll be the first one to tell you that I get excited when when a new MMO comes out because it brings me back to those days. Now, I don't know if this is talked about enough when we compare classic MMOs like WoW to newer ones like New World or future MMOs like Ashes of Creation, but we need to make sure we draw that comparison that we do live in a very different time and are at very different times in our personal lives. We're not teenagers anymore. You know, we're adults, we have families, you know, we have jobs. But speaking of personal lives, let me talk to you briefly about today's sponsor of the video, The Ridge Wallet, the wallet I can't get enough of in my personal life. So our sponsor today is The Ridge Wallet and you guys have always seen me on here. I always promote this because I love it. It's something I carry every single day. I love The Ridge Wallet, I love The Ridge Key Case. The reason I love these things, and just to name a few, is how compact everything is. I don't have bulkiness just filling up my pockets. It's amazing. I have the Damascus Steel style here. I really love this. It can hold up to 12 cards as a cash trap as well, and it protects you from digital pickpocketers with RFID blocking technology. But the awesome thing right now is you can get the best offer with my ridge.com slash bra ridge link and right now you can save up to 40 percent through december 22nd so you don't want to miss this again to get the best offer check out my link ridge.com slash bra ridge and right now you can save up to 40 percent through december 22nd i'll have that down in the description and in the comment section but thank you again to the ridge wall for sponsoring this video let's get back to the video now that we have our wallet squared away and you have a massive discount to go on and get you one of those fancy looking wallets, let's talk about the newer MMOs since these like to get a lot of use out of your wallet as well. What defines a newer MMO? Well, obviously MMOs made in recent years, but specifically newer MMOs are typically faster paced games with different mixes or styles of combat. You typically don't have tab targeting in a lot of these newer MMOs like ESO or New World. It is a lot more free flowing and you usually will point and click or point and use a skill. You also have more of a free look when it comes to your camera instead of like holding a mouse button down to turn your camera screen. And the combat feels sometimes more free form. And although you can develop rhythms like tab targeting styles of combat, it is definitely a little bit more chaotic in a lot of ways. Actions per minute or APM and animation canceling are big things in ESO. You can actually cancel the animations of skills or light attacks to speed up your rotations to get better results. Again, this is why older people sometimes have a harder time with these type of MMOs because it is harder to get the best status because it requires a lot of APM or actions per minute to get to that high DPS in like ESO. It's just a different type or style of game. But in some ways in these newer MMOs, you do have more freedom of choice sometimes in combat. Like ESO, you can use basically any skill in the game barring the other class skills. You can use any weapon, you can use any armor, you can use any of the guild skill lines. New World, you can use any weapon or armor type, so it allows a little bit more freedom. People like freedom as well. So one of the biggest reasons I think that people really like ESO or some of these newer MMOs is when they come to the game and it has a lot of freedom it's really really nice and that freedom doesn't just cover the combat or armor or type of class you want to play it also covers the freedom in the world ESO in a lot of ways is really just a play the game the way you want to play because basically 
that's how it is. Everything is scaled to you. So you could go do the newest expansion zone at level five and not even touch other zones. You can't do that in a lot of classic type MMOs. You have to you know, have some sort of gear score a lot of times to do the newest expansion. Some people really like that aspect in newer MMOs. Now New World is a newer MMO, but they still have a gear score system and zones aren't scaled, which brings me to the point that New World is sort of a hybrid MMO with classic elements. So I think that works for New World especially, and that's something I definitely want to touch on when we get into the Ashes of Creation discussion later in the video. What this also brings up, in my opinion, is a lot of the newer MMOs can be played solo and are prompted to almost play solo in a lot of ways. I'm not saying you couldn't play solo in RuneScape and obviously WoW back in the day, but these newer MMOs are designing almost for the solo player now. We made a video a little while back discussing this very topic, and I'll have a link of that in the description below, but the reason these developers are doing this is they were trying to appeal to the casual gamer. The casual gamer can't come and play six hours a day and they can't spend an hour trying to group for content in order to progress through the game. They need content that they can do by themselves because they don't have time to get groups or they don't want to get groups a lot of the times. So that's something that you see in these new MMOs now. I would consider this a plus of these games because I think that games need to design for the casual player in mind, in my opinion. Another positive thing that newer MMOs have is quality of life features. This could include group finder. This could include auto loot features, maybe better UI, maybe some sort of collection system like ESO has. There's a ton of quality of life updates that I think newer MMOs have realized that they needed because people just don't have the attention spans or the time to sit and have unimaginable grind fest experiences. But now this leads to the main crutch of newer MMOs, which we touched on briefly earlier, which is microtransactions. Newer MMOs are plagued with these. Why are they plagued with these though? Well, that's a loaded question with lots of different factors involved, but we're gonna get into it. First of all, they're plagued with these because it makes the developers a ton of money. Ding, 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 that anyone could figure that out. If it didn't make a lot of money, you wouldn't see every gaming company in the world doing this. Mobile gaming wouldn't be as big as it is if microtransactions didn't work. It brings in cash. Secondly, that money is a massive source of revenue, one would presume, and that is, really the kicker. In today's climate of gaming, MMOs almost have to have a cash shop in some way to survive, which is sad. MMOs are expensive to make and they take a lot of time and dedication to build a lasting community. Think about this. When WoW, RuneScape, or EverQuest was made, or in its prime, was gaming a popular thing? Was the competition that they had very competitive? Did they have free games at the time with battle passes? Did people have shorter attention spans? The answer to all of these questions are basically no. Gaming in the early 2000s, by all means, wasn't the popular thing to do. I remember being embarrassed about playing RuneScape in middle school. You were a nerd if you played RuneScape. You were a nerd if you played WoW or other video games. It just wasn't a very accepted thing in a lot of ways. Think about today's world. Gaming is so popular now. It's an insane industry. It's booming. It has become insanely mainstream in so many ways. I mean, you're seeing Twitch streamers on like Super Bowl commercials. So many people want to be YouTubers and streamers now. So then when we look at the competition side and free games with battle passes, MMOs really were the best of the best in the early 2000s. They didn't have a lot of competition because they were kind of a breath of fresh air and something new. You could talk to people online while playing a game. That was awesome. You also didn't have free games with battle passes and those models of battle passes undercutting the revenue of your game. And a big one is the attention span. People playing MMOs back in the day had longer attention spans. They just did. Our attention spans as a society is getting less and less. This is why all of these instant feedback games are so successful for younger kids now because they don't have time to play an MMO. They want to drop into Twisted Towers or play Warzone because it's a quick thing and it gives them instant feedback. I mean, think about the music industry. There's a stat out there, I'm pretty sure, that talks about how if a song doesn't hook someone in the first like 30 seconds or something like that, someone will move on from it. I mean, it's crazy. It's just like with YouTube. If I didn't hook you guys in the beginning of this video, you wouldn't be to this point right now. Shout out to the people that are actually here right now, but it's insane. Like our attention spans are just so short now. These are all major factors of why I think microtransactions are so prominent in MMOs now. It's because they have to balance the experience for newer players to want to be hooked and to play for at least a month or so. And in that time, they have to try to get them to spend money so, you, so they can make revenue. 
Think about this, in a world now where people don't have the patience, it's actually harder to make an MMO in my opinion because these developers don't have the luxury of people not having as many choices with games. They don't have the luxury of people having patience and wanting to grind that mount drop. They don't really have the luxury of making a game 15 years ago where revenue maybe wasn't the focal point of their gaming company as much or the corporate side of their company you know driving their sales and that is usually directed or uh, coming from the competitive side of the gaming industry gaming is so competitive now so these companies have to make so much more revenue because they have to compete or they're not going to survive and i'm not taking anything away from the developers that created these games 15 20 years ago it was still probably really hard to create them i'm just saying that the climate in which these games are created now is just not mixing well with our society basically the bottom line is making an mmo today has its challenges when it comes to keeping and retaining players along with making money it's it's really difficult and this is the reason that you see more and more cash shops as mmos are created but this leads me to look to the future of mmos that are being created and seeing what they are implementing i told you that new world was sort of a hybrid mmo it has some classic elements along with a fast-paced combat and cash shop and other features Ashes of Creation is an MMO that is looking, in my opinion, to try and bring the best of both worlds with classic elements and newer elements. I believe Stephen Sharif, the maker of Ashes of Creation, did say they are going to have a cash shop in a blog post or some sort of interview. And I think there are still going to be ways to earn mounts, though, or cosmetics, because I saw mounts when I saw like an alpha stream. And so it looks like from a lot of the streams I'm watching, they kind of want to hit on the middle ground. It also looked like the combat, I think I was watching Asmin Gold stream, where the combat looked like faster paced, but also still looked like it kind of had some classic elements. And so it looks like they want to be in the middle. And this is what I think MMOs are going to have to do in the future. Because when we try to answer the question that I posed at the beginning, is there a clear winner between a classic and newer MMOs as being the you know best MMO experience? I don't think there is mainly because you were comparing two different styles of the same genre that were made at two completely different time periods with their own unique challenges. I think there are a lot of great aspects of classic MMOs, more so than newer MMOs, personally. These specifically are gear score and more earnable cosmetics, but there are also some elements to newer MMOs that are great as well, specifically quality of life updates, uh, sometimes more exciting combat and casual solo play that does help the casual gamer. But there are also aspects to newer MMOs in a lot of ways that are at the mercy of the climate of video games in the world and the society that we live in now. I don't think MMOs today can survive without extra microtransactions because it's a declining game genre and it's a game genre and a gaming industry that has to fight so competitively to get people to come play their game. I mean, think about it. Think about how many games come out every month in certain periods of months and you're just like i don't have time to play these games like this month you had dragonflight you had god of war you had call of duty at the beginning or the end of october you had pokemon there's all these games and it's because all these companies are vying for your attention it is so competitive now so when we look to the future i think these future mmos need to take elements from the classic side and the newer side and find a happy medium I do hope games like Ashes of Creation do come to fruition, but only time will tell. But hey, if you do like this video, if you like this discussion, leave me a comment below, hit the like button, it really does help me out. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think about classic and newer MMOs, and I like doing these discussions. So again, let me know if you like this, and I will continue doing these things. But check out these videos up in the top of the screen. They will be entertaining for you, and they might be informative as well. But thank you again, y'all. Just remember, have faith, be great, and I'll see you on a video game.